Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Bell Custom. So today we're going to do another work in progress series on a personal custom of mine. This is a Power Girl LSB. You've probably seen a couple other videos on this already. And we're going to be focusing on the hair now. Uh, I want to do something a little bit different with this hair. I did a video series a while back on sculpting hair on a Dark Phoenix LSB, which was the same one. But with that, I used the armature for the hair was fiberglass. I put fiberglass all around the, you know, the head, and then I started sculpting on around that. This one is different. I'm not going to be using fiberglass, but I might. I don't know yet, but I'm kind of coming up with some different ideas. So basically, I want to copy what Sideshow did for their production. What it was is they had all the hair for uh, Emma Frost in different pieces, and they connected them, and it slid into the top of the head and had a square piece here. Now... Uh, when I first started working on this, I filled up the head, and then I was figured I was going to sculpt the hair. But now I decided, you know what, I'm going to uh, do ex what Sideshow did, because it'll be easier to do the hair pieces, and then uh, kind of paint it up, and then put the hair on, and then maybe seam up the hair, and then paint the hair. Because uh, I don't want to mess up around here, because if I have to sculpt any kind of hair, and I get aged residue in here, it'll be a nightmare. And I want to keep, keep it as clean as possible. So uh, what I did is I chopped out the stuff that I filled up already and what I did is I threw some uh, tin foil at the bottom and this is going to be like a filler item now. When every time I have extra A's and I don't want to waste it, I can start using it to fill this up. Now it's not going to fill it in, it's going to be like a block. So imagine a square block but it's going to be like a cone. It's going to be like these sides are going to be shaped this way and then these sides are going to be shaped this way. So it'll go in nice and even and uh, I, what I'll be doing is I'll be using a spatula you know, and I'll kind of just come in at angles when I have extra aves. So what I'll do is I'll make a nice little square block uh, female piece in here. And then after that's all done, I could get a big chunk of aves and I could throw baby powder in there and I could smoosh aves in there. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll have like maybe a metal rod or something on the tip and then I could pull it out. And so I'll have a key going. So we'll make a male and female key down the line. So once I get the key done and everything's looking good, I'll start sculpting out the hair in the back. Because I want, I don't want her hair coming down too low. I want it to come up like high. I want it kind of like a styled hair. I got a couple images I'm looking at online. I haven't decided yet. I've looked at a couple different artworks too. And I'm kind of like playing what I want to do. But this is going to be like something where as I'm sculpting and I'm feeling it. And I'm like, okay, maybe I want this a little bit thicker. I want that thinner. I'm just going to run with it. I'm not going to go like, it's got to look exactly like this and that's it. I'm going to just have fun with this one. So I'll do all that. Now I did sculpt the ear here as best as I could, but I kind of still want to cover the ear. Uh, I don't want the ear completely showing, but I want to have the sense that you can see like an ear here, but this part is kind of covered. So over the past year or so, what I've been doing is I've had this like a sheet metal. And the whole idea was I bent this sheet metal like this. It was going to be my armature piece. Uh, but the problem is, is with sheet metal, if I ever have to do some chopping or cutting, to cut into this would be a nightmare. So what I've been doing is, anytime I had extra A's or Magiscope that was just too, too hard to sculpt with, uh, I would just roll it out, like really raw, because it would be really tough, I would roll it out, and then I would leave it on here, and then uh, I would do baby powder, and then I got all these extra pieces. So it would be easier now, once we get the key going, I can put this piece on it, and just kind of like make my armature from here, and then I could start sculpting hair. And then if I have to cut this or break it or whatever, I could go there. So we'll probably like, you know, this piece might be like going like this or something. I don't know. We're going to kind of toy with it where, you know, you'd see the hair like that, you know, something like that. It's kind of just an armature. I want it to kind of flow up and around. So we're going to see how I can run with it. It's going to be toying with it. Um... Also, just for like planning stuff out, I don't want the, the seam of the hair in the middle. We want the split over here, you know, like, like right around here. And then the hair will come down around there. So this block is going to have to be split into two pieces too. So what we'll do is, you know, it'll be like two pieces kind of connect into it. And even if they're not completely flush and it doesn't work out perfect, I can always kind of break it up and I can throw glue and aves in there. And then when I push the hair down at the end, it'll work out. So we got to kind of at least get something going. So that's kind of what I came up with so far. Um, you know, it's just a trial and error. I just want to kind of want to have fun with this and kind of, you know, think about doing this in a sense where if when I go to paint it up, it's going to be much easier. And also I'm thinking like, if I ever had to design something for like a factory, at least I could get the idea like, okay, this is how you do it. And then you cast it up in these pieces and then you paint them and you just slap it together. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about. So, uh, you know, well, what we'll do is hopefully by the next uh, video, we'll have like at least the female part of this done, ready to go. And then we can make the male part and then we can start sculpting all the hair.
All right, so we pretty much got the inside of the square close to where I want it to be. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I think it's gonna work out fine. So what I do is I got some of this extra magic sculpt right here. So we're gonna throw some baby powder up here. And then what we'll do is we'll just take the magic sculpt. Gotta get some baby powder around there. We're just gonna push this in here like so. Now, I don't think it needs to be completely perfect, but, so, we push it in there, and then we need to get it out. So, we use a screw and kind of start working this out. So, what I'll do is, when I get extra Magisculpt and A's, I can use it to fill this in, and I can unscrew that coming out. So... What we can do is, just to be on the safe side, throw a bunch of baby powder on this piece. So if it's coming out with just a little bit of a grab, we're looking pretty good. So, also to make life easier, when we start throwing in other magic sculpt and aves we pretty much want to, to grab onto this piece so what we do is kind of like scoring so just to be on the safe side so we're looking good so we'll just let that sit for a while I'll check it like in another hour or two just to make sure everything's coming in and out no problem so leave that sit and you know what, let's just go a little bit more up on there, just to kind of grab it. It's this way, yeah, looking good. Alright, so I'm ready to start uh, utilizing this piece as a filler now. I want to make sure that I can start putting pieces on top of this head, use up extra aves and magic sculpt to like, get it to the point where it's kind of like an armature, and I can do some detailing sculpting work when I'm ready. So, like, I have a bunch of extra A's for today. I just want to start utilizing this because uh, I kind of ran out of items to fill up. So, this is a good uh, opportunity to get this going. So, at first, I was going to use the piece of metal. But then I realized that if I have to do any chopping or breaking, I'll never cut this piece of metal. Even though it would be nice. But I think once I'm done sculpting, it's going to be thick enough where I don't really need metal in there. So, I do have this piece right here. It's a magic sculpt that I laid on the piece of metal a while back. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get this like attached like right there. I think that's a good position, good starting point. And then I want to make sure that whatever I do, this kind of slides out too. So I'll attach this and then I'm thinking that it should slide out. You know, it should be able to kind of just come like right out. So I got to be careful though because if I go too far in, this bottom piece is going to... I don't want it to curve too much under there. But I don't want it to, I don't know, so I, I see, I'm, see I'm kind of toying with it. I, I kind of like it at that angle for where I need to sculpt it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice off the bottom first and go from there. So let's get that cut and we'll come back. Okay, so uh, ready to start building this armature of the hair. I still, you know, I'm still kind of planning it all out and seeing how things are going to go. So I did finish up this piece here by utilizing a lot of extra magic sculpt and aves. I took out the screw. I uh, What I did is I put all this notching of uh, Dremel marks in there just so I can, when I use aves, it connects to it easier. So that goes on there pretty well. So this is going to slide in and out, and the idea is to start adding pieces to the hair to start building an armature. Now the problem is, is if I was to use this piece of metal, it would work out great as making it stable, but the problem is, is if I ever had to Dremel up the hair, I'll never get through the piece of metal. So... This was a piece of Magiscope that I laid on there a long time ago, so we're going to use this as a starting point. I did cut off this part down here because it was curving too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach it to like right, probably like right about there. I think that's a good starting point, as you can kind of see. And uh, what I'll start doing is I'll make sure that once this piece is cured, before I start attaching any more, this piece slides in and out. So what I might have to do, like I said, is I might have to split this piece where... Um, this hair goes on and then this hair or what I might do is this piece might slide in at the end and then I might sculpt another piece on top of this to glue this in and it doesn't really need to go into the hole it could just connect onto here and then I could seam it up and you know paint it but I want to be able to paint underneath of it get it on seam it and then touch up the paint so that's kind of like the idea 
So I got this extra magic uh, A's right now. And like I said, I want to start utilizing another piece for filler. So this will be a good opportunity now from now until uh, whenever, like the winter. So I can at least get this armature going. So what I'm probably going to do is you just take some, um, you know, A's from right there. And then you take this piece and we just put it like so. Now I just got to make sure it's hitting the forehead, which we don't want to do. So I just kind of want to get it on there for now. So I think that's a good position, like looking at it, it's got a nice curve. Looking at it over here, you know, because I kind of want it to come a little bit forward above the eye. Plus we don't have an ear back here, you know. So just got to kind of toy with it. Now I want to take some and throw it over that for now. So I think the idea is what I'll be doing is I'll uh, be taking the extra pieces of uh you know, Aves, I'll put a piece of Aves, I'll take some of that other hair that I have that I rolled out on all this pieces here, and we'll just keep building it up, and we'll get a nice piece that slides in and out. So I just got to be careful, though. Every time I put a piece on, I got to make sure it slides in and goes fine. Uh, so, you know, I think that's a good point. See, it's sticking up way too much over here, but that's going to be fine, because once I throw a bunch of Aves underneath there, a magic scope, whenever, I can dremel this off, and then I can keep building around. So I want to be able to keep building uh, the hair and keep going. Now, you know, now that I'm looking at it too, um, what I might do is maybe as I get the hair over to here, maybe we'll stop and we'll use this piece to go in. And then, like I said, I can sculpt around here. And then we have another piece that connects on the back over here. So it's definitely going to be two pieces somehow. I'm not really completely sure yet how it's all going to work. But it's definitely going to be a little bit tricky, but I think in the end it'll work out. It's just a matter of keep going till I get it to the point where I can just start doing detailing work and then I can just get it all together. Okay, so I'm still planning out this hair and I'm still kind of thinking about some stuff. So at least what this piece comes in and out, no problem. It's attached on, so that's a good starting point for me. Uh, what I did is I wrapped her up in all saran wrap because right now we're going to get a little bit messy with the stuff we're going to work with and I don't want to get it all caked up on the statue. So uh, I do have two more pieces of Magiscope that's been cured. I used on that piece a while back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break them and find where I want to put them and then I'm going to glue those on for now. And then uh, once they're glued on, I'm going to start utilizing this uh, freeform air stuff because if I was to buy a container of Aves or Magic Sculpt and use it, this piece would become very, very heavy. And I don't want to make it too, too heavy. And plus, it gets very expensive with uh, buying up, a, like, you know, using a whole entire uh, a pound or four pound thing of Aves. So we have this stuff called Freeform Air from Smooth On. It's actually really cool stuff. And it's a good, uh, uh, you know, product for where I'm going to start with just to get the basic shape going. You mix A and B together like Aves. It, uh, it feels like a marshmallow sand piece. It kind of crumbles in your hand. But when you mix them together and use water, it gets a little bit tacky. And the thicker it is, the faster it cures. Now, if it was to mix it together and you leave it thin like this piece here, the freeform air will cure, but it takes a little bit longer. If you leave it thick like this piece here, it gets very hot to the hand and it cures way faster. It's just the way this chemical stuff works. But it's pretty good for this type of idea. Now, I was going to do like in my uh, last video with the Dark Phoenix custom head where I utilized the, uh, what was it, the fiberglass uh, wrap that you use for like when you break a finger or arm and stuff. And I was going to put some around here, but the only problem is, is I don't think I could get a nice loop going where I wanted it. So I think just using these pieces will work out good. So I, I'm going to focus on doing like this part of the hair first to get something just like a shell. Just build a shell. And then uh, once that's working out pretty good and I think you know before I start sculpting details I'll probably work out another shell over here that goes in and out of the head. The only problem is I'm going to run into is I got a debate on how I'm going to do the back though. I'm going to say do I need to sculpt hair and just keep building up hair so it's a little bit thicker that comes out and then build a piece that goes onto it or do I have the hair kind of loop down and kind of like come down to the back of the neck. I got to decide on how I'm going to do it. But right now I just like I said I want to keep getting this uh armature shell going and then we can start working out the details as we go.
All right, so as you saw, I got this on. It's still not cured yet, but when you touch it like here, it's getting very warm to the touch, but it's not like burning your hand, but it's just getting warmer, so it's curing. So what I'm trying to do is I'm just playing with it while it starts to cure a little bit more. Some of the thicker parts are starting to get a little bit, uh, a little bit tougher, but what I want to do is I'm just kind of keeping a little bit of an arch coming underneath, so I got to kind of play with it because the weight of this is pulling it down. It's not really like uh, I use a epoxy uh, sculpt to fix it where I can do hair and it kind of stays. But this is larger scale so it's a lot more. Um, so what I'm trying to do is just keep the shape going how I want it. And just by doing the shape alone, I'm actually thinking about now how it's going to be sculpted and you know maybe it's going to be a little bit bigger on the side here. But this will get like sanded down once uh, it cures up a little bit more. Uh, like, yeah, like underneath here, if you put your fingers like right there, it's uh, hot, it feels like, um, it's not hot burning water, but it's like warm, like hot water coming out of your faucet, but not at the point where it's like burning your fingers. So that's kind of what it feels like. Uh, but it, I think if you get it really thick, it could almost burn you. Eh, it all depends. It's not, it just feels like really hot water to me, but not the hot where it's burning your finger. But we're starting to really cure, like in here, like this thick part, not the outside, but the inside's curing pretty well. And uh, like outside is a little bit soft, but the insides are starting to cure up a little bit more. Um, so like I'm just playing with it. I use baby powder, so it wouldn't really stick to the uh, saran wrap, as you can kind of see. Uh, but this, uh, but this underneath here is probably going to get chopped up a little bit more at the bottom. It's coming way too low, but I mean, we'll see. I gotta kind of just get this up there in a shape for now. But I mean, just looking at it the side though, I'm kind of seeing how it's going to look and how we're gonna go about it. It's really big coming out this way, but we gotta take some of that down. Now the other part is what I'm going to do is once this is all cured up and it's hard as a rock, you know, like resin and stuff, what I'll do is I'll pull this off and then what I'm going to do is I'm in the inside, I'll probably put a nice layer of uh, Aves in here, underneath here. So, uh, like, these pieces and this pieces are all kind of bonded together a little bit more strongly because and I still fear that maybe if I pull this off, this stuff might break off. So I got to kind of make sure a lot of stuff's secured. Um, I don't want to really pull it off just yet, but I think the inside I'm going to have to really uh, sand down because as I push it between the gaps, it kind of squeezed out, you know, like... Um, just like you know toothpaste and stuff would squeeze out of a tube so but it's really it's see it's it's starting to really cure up a little bit certain parts are a little bit weak still other parts are pretty strong so like this part like around here seems to be a little bit weaker compared to like the bottoms already kind of curing up but it's really good stuff i like it it's uh it's very lightweight too which is going to make this a lot easier won't be as heavy um, I never really chopped it up yet. I mean, this is going to be a good experiment to like, you know, seeing how this chops up with, you know, my Dremel tool and stuff because I want to give it an eggshell almost and then I can sculpt around it and I can do all the hair and I can blend it out. But especially underneath here too, I got to kind of chop because I want to try to kind of give it a little bit of a curve underneath, but we'll see. So I'm going to keep playing with this for the next, I don't know. 15 20 minutes because it's like really starting to cure up now at the bottom here and still a little bit soft up around here so we'll see how this comes in the next like half hour or so all right so it's uh pretty 20 minutes more we're pretty much cured up uh, at the bottom some parts over here that are not as thick is a little bit soft still uh but you can see down here it is pretty much cured up pretty fast so what i did is while this was curing i cut some of this out uh, in here it's still a little bit soft so what I'm probably going to do is let this just cure up for the day, not even mess with it anymore. So now I can actually start using this as a filler piece again. So uh, whenever I have extra aves, I can fill in back here, kind of lock this in place, get some more aves underneath here. Um, just make sure, you know, this gets into a nice good uh, shell because I'm a little bit concerned with this part around here. You know, just kind of want to make sure everything's looking pretty good. And then once I get this all pretty much uh, set up, and pretty much locked up to the point where it's cured and I think it's durable. Then what I'll do is I'll probably get into the garage one day 
and what I'll do is I'll kind of like shave all this down and get it to like the nice rounded area I want to do to get this kind of curved up a little bit more because this is coming out too far and then it goes that way as you can kind of see kind of comes out this way and then it comes back so I want to kind of give it a little bit of a curve so this way when I start sculpting all the strands of hair it'll work I don't want it to be too puffy either so I got to make sure I take some of this down while I was working on it though I did bring this up to an angle um, now that I'm thinking about it though, what I might do is right now, just to kind of, while it's still a little bit soft, take some of this out, just to make my life a little bit easier, so this way when I uh, do the the part of the hair, because we have to have some kind of a part going, just to make uh, it be a little bit easier to take this out. Um, but it's all a trial and error, just to kind of see, so I, the part's going to... See, I don't want the part down to center. I want a little bit to the side. So I'm just kind of looking at it there. And yeah, that'll make life a little easier just to take this out now. Because like I said, I might want to connect a piece here. Or I might want to chop this out and connect a piece. So kind of see what I did. So it's kind of good that this is still a little bit soft in some areas. And it's still it's hardening up in the others. I'm leaving the screw in for now only because it's just easier to pop it in and out. Once I'm ready to start doing some detailing work, I can pop the screw out or I can leave it in and then I'll work it out at the end. But yeah, alright, so I'm just going to let that cure up and then uh, hopefully by the next time we come back and we start working on anything, I'll have a lot of extra aids and magiscope all secured in there. This will be all shaved down and we can either start working on this piece or we can start doing detailing work and go from see how things are gonna work out. All right, so after doing some yard work this morning, I figured while I'm messy, let me sand this piece down. So uh, what I did is I have a wheel sander and I was just kind of going slow against the wheel sander. Now, while it was big and heavy, I had a good grip. So as it started to get smaller and smaller, thinner, it was kind of like grabbing on me. And I knew I would probably break this piece off sooner or later. So uh, sure enough, this piece broke off because I was also sanding down here, kind of getting this part evened out, as you can kind of see as like the curve. And uh, so what I did right now is I got a couple of these extra pieces I just glued on for now. And I actually ordered another uh, kit of Magic Sculpt from the Complete Sculptor. So I figured uh, I only got a little bit left in here. Um, really not that much left. It's kind of getting old. So I figure, let me strengthen up a lot of this stuff here. So what I want to do is I want to get some stuff underneath there and strengthen that up. Because uh, this piece is going to get taken down anyway. Because this is coming way too far over here. But I want to thicken up underneath in here a little bit more. Um, I like the idea that stuff is curving underneath now. You know, like it's kind of curving underneath. So we won't see much back here, so it doesn't really matter. It's like right here is kind of where we're going to see sculpted hair and a little bit over here. And uh, back in there, we don't. it doesn't matter. But as I'm working on it, I'm looking online now, and I've been looking at different hairstyles. I'm also looking, not just realistic hair, but I'm looking at, like, you know, on DeviantArt, um, comic art fans, just looking different hairstyles the way uh, artists draw it. So I'm also thinking maybe what I'm going to do is a layered effect, too, which I'll do is, like, I'll sculpt some strands of hair here and here to here, and then when I start doing the big hair coming down, I don't have to come all the way down, so it's kind of like almost like feathered, because if it's split up here, it's kind of flopping over, and it's not going to come all the way down. It's going to stop, like, around there somewhere. So I'm toying with some ideas, but I still want to get these shapes going. But I also... Uh, I'm going to clean up this edge around here probably with Magic Sculpt and Aves whenever I have extra. Uh, plus, I need to have it even, uh, you know, smoother than this rough stuff here. So, basically, what I'll do is I'll have one piece, piece connected here. So, what I'll do is I'm probably going to have to cut this down a little bit more and come, like, around there. So, it's one little strand coming down. So, you can see it kind of curves. It's kind of warped. But this piece will connect over there, which will kind of work out pretty cool. So... I'm going to get this mixed up. I'm going to strengthen up in here, uh, get this going, some strengthen up some parts around here. I don't have much left of this, but uh, at least I can get most of it going for now.
All right, so uh, what I did is I used some baby powder and uh, I put it underneath in here so you could see a lot of baby powder and stuff because I just want to make sure that this is not attaching to the head and also that we're getting a nice uniform piece. So I'm just keep playing with it until it really starts to harden up and just kind of keep messing there. Um, so it definitely goes in nice and uh, flush now. So what I did is I did a marker here. And what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to cut this down the line when I'm ready to start doing sculpt work. Because I want this to have volume over here. I don't want it to be flat against the forehead. I want to have some kind of volume with the bangs coming around here. Uh, also what I did is I pried off this back chunk here. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this smooth out here. And then I'll probably sculpt hair at the bottom. Uh, so what I'm going to probably do is that now just to get that filled up. But at least now the magic sculpt is going to make this all tougher now. So it's not going to break and crack easier while handling it. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure I'm going with it. So I also built up a little bit under here a little more too. So like my idea is I'm going to do the sculpting of the stuff and then I'm going to layer over it. So I'm going to have like it kind of flopping over the head type thing. So it's not going to be completely flat. It'll stop like over here like it's kind of over that side. Um, threw some back here. I'm kind of toying with it a little bit while it's hardening. Because uh, what I want to do is I want to have that nice flat piece going across here. So... At least I used up the rest of this magic sculpt now because it was getting really tough and it's been sitting here for so long that I want to just utilize it and get it used up. When I get the next fresh batch, I'll be good to go. But uh, at least now I can start filling. Uh, what I might do is once this is all cured up, I'll probably go back into the garage and cut this going down this way again and get a nice like cut and then I'll fill it in with some Aves so this way I can make a nice piece on that side. Um, something new to me, I'm just kind of toying with it. Um, I'm probably going to just keep toying with the edges in here, kind of going and filling it in and going it down. So I don't want it too close to the face. You know, I want to keep it a little bit further away from the face just so we can see it in there. But at least it's kind of like when you look at that angle, it covers half the face. But when you look at this angle, you see it. So I'm just having fun with it. So uh, I'm going to fill this in over here. We'll get this nice and smoothed out within the next couple of days. And then uh, hopefully we'll get this shape pretty much ready to go to work out the next piece. So I had a chance to go into the garage and do a little bit more chopping. I sanded down around here. I evened this up. I sanded this down a lot more. Uh, I gave a little bit of a curve here. We'll show you in a second. But right now what I'm doing is I'm just throwing silly putty on around the head. Just to, It's giving me an idea of where the hair is going to go. So you get an idea that I'm going to kind of like give some nice hair style coming around here. And then we're going to come down around here. So this will get thickened up a little bit more around here. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, once I start sculpting this section, I want to kind of do a little bit of a hair coming behind the ear a little bit, and then give the rest of the bob look coming down here. So I like Power Girl having that bob hair look, and it kind of stylized a little bit more with kind of flipping it over. So as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking that maybe I went too thick back here, but then when I'm putting on the Silly Putty, I'm thinking that maybe it's just the right size because we want to have some kind of volume coming here. We don't want it to be completely flat and I want to kind of just stylize. So the idea is this section will be able to come apart and then this section kind of goes on top. So it just gives you a little bit of an idea and this helps me just kind of plan out a little bit more. This is what I kind of had in my head but then as I'm working on it, it's good to kind of to say, okay, now I, I leave this the way it is but I'm going to have to build up the front a little bit more. Um, of course, you know, we'll, you know, we'll work on better, uh, bangs looking a little bit more, uh, you know, stylized and like maybe we'll have one kind of come like this or something, um, you know, a little bit one like that, something, you know, so I might, you know, I'm going to have to play with it a little bit. Of course, this won't be as long down here and messy, but it gives you the idea of where we're kind of bringing it like so. So, you know, then this might have a little couple strands coming off there and it'll kind of blend. But just to give you guys an idea of where we're at though, so we could just pull all this off. So don't be afraid to ever like if you have something like silly putty or some kind of clay or something, you could kind of just toy with it, give yourself an idea, and then go from there. 
but you can see kind of how it's kind of bland now but that's a good uh, starting point but what I did do is I kind of curved this here because I still want to be able to see the face when we're looking straight on because if you're looking straight on at her from the camera if it comes all the way out here you're not seeing any of the face I want to see some of it here so I might actually kind of curve this in just a little bit more and then when I do my sculpt work it'll come build back out but we'll see the face um, but as uh, right now too I have to kind of debate on how I'm going to do the top of this head now. So this right here is kind of wobbly because it's kind of getting heavy over here and it's pulling it back. So what I might do is I might just put pieces of tape down and then do like the sculpting underneath with the hair and then let it sit. Or I might decide to do a magnet or something. But I think at the end I don't want this to be removable. I want it to be attached at the end. So I might just put tape down there. But that's kind of where I'm at now, just give you guys an idea. This is probably going to be on the back burner now again for a little while uh, from this point of the video, only because i got to get on some other stuff. But I just wanted to get stuff to suit just this weekend for personal issues. So that's kind of where we're at. Okay, so I had a chance to walk away from this a few days, uh, you know, so it's always good to come back to stuff fresh. So as I came back to it, I really didn't like the way this was curved. So I went online and I was uh, looking through some of my uh, screensaver pictures too. And I had, there's a bunch of Power Girl images. So I decided, you know what, we're going to give a little bit of a curve in here. So this way when you look at her, you kind of see the face a little bit more. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm designing here. It's always good to kind of be able to draw on here just to give you some ideas of how it's going to look in a way. So uh, other thing too is as I came back to it, I realized this piece doesn't actually sit completely flush because it's getting heavier over here. So I want this to be flush while I'm working on it, you know, so I want it to be able to, when this kind of connects in here, it's perfectly flat and all this is here. Because if I sculpt this one day and I walk away and then it starts lifting up, we have a gap. The idea would be too now is like if I could connect this piece and I can connect this piece and then I don't have to seam it and I can just have them removable, that would be great. But I don't know how that's going to work. So uh, I always order magnets off eBay. Uh, it's best to order the N50s or the N52s. Those are the stronger ones for all this stuff. If you get the, I think it's 40, 42, or 48s. I forget exactly which ones they are. They're a little bit weaker. So these are actually some big ones I get for uh, larger projects. And you could, you have to kind of slide them off. And then if when you go to put them back on, you got to get your finger out of the way. Otherwise, you'll snap a finger or these will break too. So what I'm going to do is for now, I got some extra A's. I'm going to drum out here, I'm going to put a magnet in here, let that cure up for the night. And then I'll put another magnet in there and we'll hopefully this will be a nice flush piece and I can work with it. And then when we start working on this second piece here, I might add another magnet or something while I'm working on it. And then if I decide that at the very end I don't need to glue this and attach it, we'll leave the removable hair pieces. But I have a funny feeling I might need to take out the magnets and actually do some sculpt work after we paint it and seam it all up and make it one whole piece. It just would be easier to have these removable to get underneath in here because otherwise it'll be a nightmare trying to get over here and we don't want to mess up all this too with sculpt. So uh, I'm going to go in the garage now. We'll get this magnet in here and hopefully this will work out pretty good. Alright, so uh, at this point I got magnets on both sides. So I have a magnet in here and which just looks messy as hell and then a magnet in here. So now this piece clicks on pretty well and it's a really strong magnet. I have a little bit of a push right there but nothing serious. Uh, at least I'll be able to kind of sculpt this and not like really go crazy. But it goes in and out pretty well. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to chop this down over here, sand this down. And then uh, what I did is I had some extra uh, aves the other night and I put this little piece back here. So I'm going to kind of sand this down and get this curved up and nice and flush. And then what I'm going to do is start building up some kind of a shell going on this part over here. I also got to make sure I kind of curve it a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. So this way I can start figuring out if I'm sculpting here underneath or if I'm just going to keep it like this. And then once I got my two basic pieces, I can start fine tuning them and then actually start sculpting on. So I'm still debating yet if I can leave the magnets in or not, but we'll see what happens. All right, so we're going to start working out this part of the hair of the shell, and I want to just create some kind of a base piece that goes over there for now, and then I can use my free form to build a little bit more of a, you know, like piece around it. So uh, a client of mine stopped by the other day, and uh, they had this uh, black container of Aves uh, epoxy sculpt, and they decided that they didn't like it, or 
they tried doing some things on their own in the hobby, wasn't really into it, didn't have the patience, I guess. So he asked me if I just wanted it. So I said, yeah, I'll take it. I mean, if you don't want it. So gave it to me, and so I'm working on it now. Now, this is the black color. And really one of the reasons why I don't pick the black is because you could see the, you know, it's like the dye in the black gets all over the place, uh, just mixing it with the gloves. So that's why I kind of stick with the red. Even though the red stains a little bit, it doesn't overstain, but it gives you enough of a stain where you can see errors and you can see uh, like fingerprints and all that stuff. The black is just all over the place. I think they just put too much of a black dye into the Aves. But it's a good, uh, you know, filler item for me now. So I could use this to do other things like, you know, maybe sculpting bases, uh, working out shell pieces of the hair, filling in areas, stuff like that. So uh, I mixed up a big chunk. What I'm going to do is... Uh, kind of flatten this out a bit get some uh, baby powder out of the garage come back and then uh, just lay it over here and just kind of let it sit for like the night and so I could just create some kind of a piece for here for now and then we could start building up around it okay so as you saw I put the piece on and I'm trying to give myself a nice good shell starting point here now um, the back here it's I need to use like um, the free form I don't like the way this is kind of cutting down here uh, it's kind of pushing it down too, it's a little bit heavy. So just to be on the safe side, what I'm going to do is cut this off to here. So this will be a nice good shell piece starting there. Now I just got to wait for like an, you know, an hour or so, so this to harden up and I could probably pop this in and out. What I also been doing is I've been taking my uh, tool here and I've just been giving it like, you know, hatch marks and crosses and stuff like that so this is something I learned back in high school when you do pottery uh, whenever you cut something and you want to add something else you got to kind of do it with that baking clay stuff like this so it's uh this way when I put the free form over here to the back this will probably kind of grab a little bit more because I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna still sculpt hair back here a little bit and then I might break this out a little bit more and then kind of blend it in so if you're looking underneath you'll see some kind of hair instead of just hollowness um, I'm also making sure, you know, this is kind of even there for now. It's still got to come over around there, but it's a good starting point. Now, I was going to use my regular red A's for doing this anyway, but since the guy gave me this black stuff, I figured, you know, it's all right. I'll just use it for this. It'll be fine. So, because uh, the A's, it goes on there a little bit smoother with the baby powder. It forms pretty well, and it stays, and it hardens. The freeform air... It's good for kind of building certain areas, but I realized kind of pushing it onto there, pulling it off, it'll get very tacky and it won't work as well as I like what the A's will do. So we're at a good starting point. Um, probably what I'll have to do is kind of sand down some of the ear area anyway. Maybe just to be on the safe side, we'll not use any solvent, but we'll just uh, go around there. So this should... Uh, should work out pretty well. So we got like two pieces now going and hopefully we'll see how this pops off in the next hour or so. Okay, we're gonna start working on the back of the hair right now. I wanted to get a lot of this done today. I just got some time for some personal stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix like half fix it sculpt and half epoxy sculpt together. It's gonna look pink. So what I do is I mix A and B of this together, A and B of this together, and then I mix them together in equal amounts. And what it does is it really doesn't do much other than it's uh, not wasting all the fix it because I would love to sculpt the whole hair and fix it, but the only problem is it gets very expensive with this stuff. So by you know utilizing some of this and this, it creates it soft, a little bit durable, and it cures just like regular. It, it just cures like normal. It, it doesn't hurt anything. Uh, so it's going to be good to do like this process with these two together. The back of the hair around here, like all the detailing around the hair around there, around here. But then when I start getting up around here, doing all the like, uh, you know, finer detail of the bangs and around here, then I'm just going to use regular fix-it sculpt. But instead of like, you know, just using regular A's over here where it's so soft and I can't like, sometimes when you push it, you push way too much and too fast and it doesn't really work that well. Or this is really, this is a little bit more durable and you get a little bit better like detailing. So it's kind of like just mixing it. It's something I found out at night just by experimenting when I had extra A's of both of these together. I'd say, well, instead of wasting them, I'll mix them two together and I'll throw it on another statue. And I saw the way it consisted and the way it worked. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start doing that a little bit more often. Use some Fix It and the Epoxy Sculpt together so you get like a mid. You have this, which is kind of like durable. It doesn't really fall and you can get some really good uh, smooth like hair strokes 
where this it's kind of like really really soft and one wrong move and all of a sudden you kind of really push too much aves around but when you mix these two together you get kind of like that middle ground and that'll be kind of good for doing the hair so we're gonna mix up a little bit and I'm just gonna start doing the hair around here what I'll probably do is like one little bit layer then another day I'll do another layer or maybe later tonight I'll do another layer and keep going till it's almost hitting the back of these hair pieces and then once that's pretty much where I want it to be in the back of the hair, then I can start, you know, sculpting all this hair around there and everything, get that going. Okay, so uh, this is going to change up a little bit now, only because my idea was to have two removable pieces and all connected together at the end, and it just wasn't working. I'm more comfortable sculpting on uh, a head with the hair than trying to make it removable. Uh, so I give a lot of sculptors credit out there who sculpt from scratch, where they can actually sculpt the item and then make the piece removable and it looks all clean and you can cast up pieces separately. It's kind of a really, a, it's definitely a, something that you gotta really practice. So, uh, but for me, I'm more comfortable with sculpting on top of a skull or on a head, like with a lot of 1-4 scale stuff. So I decided I was gonna take this piece away and not even deal with it. It's not the end of the world because I can always break it up and use it for filler stuff. So it's not the end of the world with that. But I still decided I'm going to do this part removable. So this hair is going to be sculpted backwards and come around. It's going to be attached to the head because I can still paint here. But this piece definitely has removable. So what I did is I sanded this whole piece down nice and flat. I filled, uh, I took out the magnet and I moved the magnet down a little bit. And then I filled this in. And then uh, what I did over here is I put some aves in here today. So this piece still connects in and out no problem. So... Now what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to sculpt this hair coming this way. I can keep building up how I usually build up hair. I'll have it come around the edge over here. So it'll be kind of really cool and wavy. And it's going to kind of come behind the ear with a little bit over. And then uh, what's going to happen is this piece right here, uh, I still got to kind of take it down a little bit more. Probably a little bit more over here. And then what happens is when this piece is kind of sculpted here, this is going to kind of go over it. So I'll kind of have like a little bit of a wave or something or over this piece so it kind of connects. Uh, but I think that's going to work out a lot better for the way I sculpt and how I'm working out this item. So this way I can actually just focus on this piece and this hair is going to be attached and I don't have to worry about anything. So this is definitely a good starting point over here and I'm not really worried about any of this because it's going to get layered over on top of it and I'm going to keep layering it and layering it. So... Um, at one point, maybe I can break off that piece in the back and utilize it in the back, or maybe I don't even need this piece that I had over here. I don't know. It's just uh, this this project's kind of evolving as I work on it. Just uh, it's something new. It's a bigger scale. I got an idea on how I wanted to work it, but I want to make sure I can actually paint it too at the same time. So it's a little bit tricky. So uh, what I'm going to do now is going to let this cure up for tonight because this aves isn't really uh, cured yet. I could come back the next day and I could sand this down, smooth it out a little bit, and then I could actually really sit down and have a good session of sculpting the hair, letting it cure, and then build it up again and keep building it up and get it to where I want it on this side. And it'll kind of like, when I'm looking at it, I can block this part out there and say, okay, this is how I like the hair here. Now I got to kind of flow this hair around it. So a little bit, uh, a little bit of an extra step, but this is, you know, kind of a good learning project for one of my own uh, personal pieces.
So you can see I'm building up, uh, trying to get it into the camera as much as I can, but uh, I'm really just so focused on this, I'm just kind of getting in the zone. So uh, you can see back here, I'm slowly building this up. I'm trying to build this up coming this way. So this way, once it's sort of even with here, uh, I can actually kind of build this up and build this up at the same time, work under here a little bit more. And then uh, once I kind of get this section kind of even and it kind of comes apart, I'll be able to focus on this in one shot. Now if you look over here, I got this kind of puffy where I want it to be, but this over here is still flat. I have to really build up this area because if you look at the hair over here, it, even though this kind of part is kind of flipped over, this area over here is too thin. It's got to kind of build out a little bit more. Plus I want to build over the ear a little bit too, so it's kind of just a good starting point. Now for any reason I feel that this is kind of messed up over here, I'll chop, chop some of it out. But I think if I just keep building over here and building this kind of curving around, it should work. Uh, I know sometimes you may say, well, why do you do all this detail over there if you kind of cover it up? It's just, it just kind of helps me do it. Uh, I just kind of keep building and building and building. It's just how I kind of work with hair. 
but it definitely got this section up here kind of puffy where I want it to be. And I think just once we kind of build up around here, we build up back there and we get that nice kind of curve uh, bob hair going, it'll all work together over here as well. Uh, this is going to be all the tricky part under here is getting this part, but once I kind of get this where I want it, the rest should follow. So what I'm going to do now though is i got to go in the garage and put some baby powder over here so this doesn't bond this. Because uh, I want to try to make sure that this piece comes in and out and separate to make life easier for painting, plus the moving and, you know, packing and whatever I need to do down the line. But, uh, yeah, just going to keep plugging away on this and uh, go from there. I'm going to let this cure up for the night because I think uh, it's a little too late and I think I've gotten as far as I really want to go. It's kind of good to step away from it for uh, a couple days and come back and keep plugging away. But uh, yeah, I think we're in a good uh, starting point. All right, so you may sort of see a change in the hair. Uh, what happened was, one, I was working on it last night, the battery died out, and I wasn't filming. And two, when I cleaned up last night, I was looking at the hair, and it really wasn't where I wanted it to be. There was something off with it. I couldn't feel it. It was just bothering me, so I decided, let me walk away from the item and just clean up for the night. So when I cleaned up for the night, I went and watched some TV shows, and after I watched some typical TV shows, I was like, all right, let me look at some online pictures and see some Bob haircuts, and I realized what I was doing wrong. So what happened was the hair was going straight backwards. It wasn't kind of coming up with the bangs and then going around the ear. Uh, so, you know, it depends on what kind of style you're going for and how it's building. So what I did is I drummled out this hair here, and then what I did is I rebuilt the hair coming underneath of it and I kind of drummed out some there and then I rebuilt here a little bit more. So now what I have to do is kind of build out here because I did this this morning, worked on a couple other projects, so I'm cleaning up for the night. So let me just build up a little bit over here. So I think I'll get this where I want it to be and then I can start working on the back of the hair, getting that finished up and then I can start working on this section because I wanted the hair to have a little bit more volume. It felt very flat to me and it really wasn't where I wanted it to be. Because this part, I want some volume, but this is gonna be where more of the volume is gonna be. It's gonna be a little bit heavier over here. So I just figured I'd uh, go with that route. Plus it wasn't high enough, it was so low, it just didn't, it wasn't feeling right. So I think by just doing these little bit of these curves, like it kind of curves up and then it comes down around the ear and it comes back around there. That's kind of where I was planning on going with it in the beginning but I wasn't getting it correctly. And I think it was because I was using so thin of uh, aves, I wasn't giving it the volume it needed. So I'm happy with where it's at now. I think it's really going to start working. So I just gotta kind of build up here. Right now I'm gonna do that. And then once that's cured up, I'm gonna really start focusing on the front of this area here and then start working my way backwards. And then hopefully this will kind of come together at the end. Now for any reason during the project, maybe I felt that I kind of went too high up here. I can always drumble this off and I can rework this area if I need to. But I think right now uh, we're looking pretty good. I got this kind of exactly where I wanted it to be. It's a little bit stylized and I like the way the hair is kind of a little bit comes back there and you kind of see the back of the neck. That's kind of like the style I wanted to go for. And I'm just having fun with it. Now I try not to think of it too much. I just want to think that when I was looking at it to the side, it looked good, but when I turned it to here, I was like, wait a second, something's off on this angle, but this angle was looking right. So I think right now, once I build this up over here, I'll have exactly where I wanted it to be, and then we'll just keep going. I think the only trickiest part though is gonna be in here, so I might have to kinda fudge a little bit in there with some flatness and just kinda leave it as is. But yeah, I think it's, uh, it's coming together pretty well now. I think this is where I wanted it to be. Okay, so uh, I stepped away from this for a few days. What I did is I put a bag over her and I just kind of wanted to not even look at her because like after I finished up the hair, I was like, you know, something's still bothering me. I can't figure out what it is. So I said, all right, let me just walk away from this uh, and I'll come back to it in a couple days and maybe it'll pop out and see what I'm doing wrong. 
So I put the, took the paper bag off the head and I put some silly putty on this side of the hair and I realized what I'm doing wrong. So when I look at the hair this way, it's where I want it. I like these curves. Uh, I like the way it's pushed in the back of the hair uh, from the neck. This is exactly the way I wanted this. But when you look at this side, it looks good. But when you look at the front, it's not where I want it to. And what's going on is this piece up here around there is too high. Uh, I went too high with this and it should be a little bit lower so this part is kind of like higher than this part so I make this higher than this it's really way too high so this is the problem here it's this section in there and that's the only problem with Aves uh, when you sculpt with Aves uh, it cures it's rock hard and it's not like you know uh, super sculpty or wax or other kind of wax clays where you can kind of keep working it and then you could bake it or make copies of it uh, with the Aves it's kind of like okay you sculpted it, it's a done deal so what I'm going to do now is, uh, after I put this uh, silly putty here, I'm going to kind of chop this down and I'm going to kind of rework it. And I might make it a little bit more messy. I don't know. i got to kind of play with it. Because uh, I went on uh, Google and I went on to a couple actresses and models with bob haircuts. And I kind of see what I'm doing a little bit wrong. Uh, that's the only problem is I just kept building this up too high. So it's going to be like right about there and right about there. So I'm going to chop this down. I'm going to kind of like chop it down going around there. And then I could kind of blend this out a little bit more. And then I could take this down a little bit. It shouldn't be up high. It should be coming down a little bit further and inwards, not like up around here. So I just got to take that out. But I like this part over here, though. This part over here is fine. And this is over here. It's just this. Because, uh, like, the silly putty over here, if we take this off, you can see how high it is compared to this piece, which was originally kind of supposed to be uh, there. So basically, it just went way too high up there. So I just got to take that down. So I'm going to go into the garage. I'm going to probably grind that out. And then I can work on it uh, when I get a chance. And then uh, we'll come back. And hopefully, once we get this section to where we want it, we can really start focusing on that section. Okay, so uh, as you can see, this is the third try on the hair. And this is where I wanted it to be. Uh, the first one was just too flat. It wasn't looking right. The second one was just way too high. So when I dropped all this off up top here and then I rebuilt this around here, it worked out better. So this is kind of where I wanted it to be. Uh, just using extra aves and stuff when I have it at night to work on the back a little bit. So right now we're running into a tricky part. Now this is kind of like the new area for me, so I'm truly trying to get this done right. I'm putting extra aves underneath here. I'll pop the hair off in a second. So I want this to get seamed up really nice here. And then I can start working on this hair in the back. But the only other thing too is I don't want this to be too, too big. So I got to kind of fudge this a little bit. So I'm also using extra A's and Magiscope that night when I work on stuff to bring this down. So this, I don't want to come out straight. I want it to kind of come out and down a little bit. So this one, when I sculpt onto it, it builds up. So it's a little bit tricky. Uh, this one might take a couple tries too. But I think once I get that, you know, basic shape and everything, uh, it'll go. But I'm showing you kind of what I'm doing. So this does pop off. And I'm just throwing extra A's and Magiscope and stuff underneath there just to kind of start building it. Uh, what I'm probably going to do is one day when I get a chance, I'll probably sharpen up some areas around here and clean this up. So this way when I sculpt hair over, it, it kind of gets layered a little bit more at the bottom pieces. So it's just a little bit tricky. Uh, kind of might do the inside sculpting first and then I could kind of have this thick. And if I need to sand this down and then build up, it'll go. But the idea is this is going to be a little bit higher than this area anyway because this is like the majority of the hair and I'm just going to kind of lay over it. So that's where we're at. Uh, just going to keep building and just seeing how things work out. All right, so uh, past like three weeks or so at night, I would just uh, take my time and actually work on this a little bit more. I just had to drive to do it and I just didn't have any room on the camera to film me sculpting it. So it's just a matter of messing around and just keep building it up. So we can see how it's starting to look. It took a little bit of a couple tries. Uh, I had to really work up this area around here. Uh, what happened was when I first sculpted, it was really far back. And so I just kept building it up a little bit and a little bit more in front because I kind of wanted to cover this side of the face because she's kind of leaning forward. So it kind of builds it up a little bit more. And what happened was, uh, as I was working, I wasn't paying attention, it slipped through my hand and I broke this back part. So what I have to redo this is sort of go into the garage now and sand all this back down because it's uh, up too far. But once I get that done, I can actually go there. And then what I'm going to do is uh, once this is done, I might sort of rework some areas. Like uh, this is completely flat going across here. So what I might do is I might kind of like a little bit like jagged it a little bit so what I might do is drum out a little bit over here and bring this piece here drum out a little bit here bring this piece here and just kind of make it work a little bit more but I just kind of make sure that I'll be able to 
Just pop it in and out. So it's gonna just work out not too far, but just kind of break this up a little bit more. And then I definitely have to work out this part here. And then what I'm gonna try to do is maybe just uh, build up some pieces around here and dremel some stuff here and just kind of work it so it's not perfectly going down the side. Sort of kind of break it up a little bit more like I did over here. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I'm really happy with the way it's coming out. Uh, especially when you kind of see it from this angle here, you kind of capture the side of the face and everything. But that's where we're at. So I'm just gonna keep plugging away on this, cleaning it up, and just uh, adding more details. All right, so uh, I think I got the hair where I wanted it to be. Uh, it took a couple tries, of course, throughout the whole video series. Uh, you know, first couple times just really wasn't working. This is something new for me, doing like bob hair cut, kind of short hair that doesn't really kind of flow around the shoulder to the back or flow out to the, you know, to the side or something. I'm so used to doing long hair styles of sculpting hair, 
doing something short hair like this is a little bit different. So it was good to commission Roberto to do the hair sculpt for me for my 1-4 uh, scale Power Girl so I can actually see you know what's going on and how he did it. So it gave me a lot of uh, you know reference to see how he did it and help me kind of come up with this a little bit better. So these strands and everything look a lot better than what I did in the beginning. There's a lot more flow even though it's kind of like a bob haircut. Uh, all I have to do is kind of blend out this area back here a little bit more so this way it, I know it's going to be split, but it's not going to look as bad uh, just because this part comes out a little bit further than this. So it's mostly in here what I have to kind of clean up. The other thing too is I have to clean up up here a little bit more too. As you can see, I started doing a little bit more with some uh, extra Avis I had only because these parts were a little bit split too far. It really wasn't as a, you know, kind of like a sporadic like I wanted it to be. So I just got to clean up that up there. But other than that, uh, we're pretty much uh, ready to go almost. It's just a matter of cleaning up, priming it, so this way I can see her all in gray primer, and then it'll let me know if, like, you know, I really want to add a little bit more or if I need to do anything else to it. But, yeah, I think uh, we're pretty much good to go. So I'll get this cleaned up. I'll touch up some more stuff over there, and we'll come back, and then we'll see if uh, that's pretty much where I want to be or if I'm going to add anything else. So it's kind of one of those things that... Seeing half red and seeing half gray, it's kind of like I really can't see completely the picture as yet. I can kind of see it, but once it's all grayed up, it should come. Okay, so she's all finished up. So I was sorry about the long-winded video. Uh, this piece will really kind of went on throughout the whole year of 2019. Uh, there was a lot of, you know, trials and errors with this because I find short hair to be very tricky even though I like the bob haircuts better for like Power Girl and stuff, but the problem is, is it's really, you know, you just sculpt here and you sculpt here and then that's it. Whereas long hair, you come around the front of the eye, you can make it a little like, you know, seductive, you come around down there, uh, and you can do it to a point. So short hair is kind of like a learning curve for me and I'm still trying to experiment with it a little bit more and stuff, uh, but I think it worked out pretty well. Now in the beginning, I probably should have just done one side sculpted in the beginning and then had this separate, uh, but I was thinking too much of like, uh, the end result when I'm ready to paint it, to, you paint it up where I can actually paint the face and then put the hair pieces on at the end. But I, now that I think about it, you know, I'm just doing a one of a kind, so I should have just done this in the beginning and this removal from the start. But, you know, like a factory or like a company, if you're going to mass produce something like this, you want two hair pieces. So this way the factory can paint all the heads and the bodies. And then the other part of the factory paints the hair and then you just glue them at the end and you ship them out. But that's just the way it works. Now, the reason why I really changed this up is because my first two times that I kind of worked on this, I didn't like the way it looked. I actually commissioned Roberto Von Burr to do a bob haircut style for my custom Power Girl Premium Format head. I'll show another video down the line when I finish those up. And because I love the way he sculpts hair, I love his designs, I'm always studying his sculpts. And uh, so I wanted to see what he would do on a short hair because I see everything he really does is usually long hair. So he did it, he nailed it, he did an amazing job. So I kind of wanted to follow what he did on here. So when I got it in the mail, that's really what inspired me to really go back and change this and do this uh, kind of stylized like sort of he did on that. So that video will be down the line when I finish those up. But this just kind of worked out best for me and I really kind of am happy that I commissioned him. Because I always like to study a lot of other artists out there, whether it's sculptors or uh, draw, you know, people who draw. And just get better ideas and stuff on how to do things. But it worked out pretty well. So at this point, I'm actually starting to paint her up. As you can see, I'm already starting to work on the eyes. They're a little bit tricky. Uh, the cape is all finished up. I'll have another video of that up soon. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some live streams about this uh paint up of this. I figured it would be good just to like, you know, getting close to the holidays anyway. I really wanted to finish this before the end of the year. So I figured I could just kick on a live stream on like a Friday or Saturday and just paint her up and have some fun. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, sorry about like again a long winded video, but it was a little bit tricky, but I think the end result, I'm pretty happy with it. So thanks for watching and we'll be back with some more videos.